If you are also looking for professional certified structural engineering services or courses, then don't forget to check link in description of this video. In the last video, we discussed the general guidelines for structure design and new structures. So now we'll specifically discuss the guidelines for when starting the design of new masonry structures. We have to ensure first that the box action in the masonry structure is achieved. For example, we have to provide lintel band in order to provide the lateral bracing to the structure. The foundation of the structure should be stiff whether you are achieving it by con continuous wall footing or raft footing. We have to provide good connection between the walls at corners if the region is high seismic zone. We have to provide a good connection between walls and foundation using a plinth beam or an anchored connection between the walls or using grout. Wall openings with walls with small openings is a very reasonable requirement for masonry structure. Roof that stays together as a single integral unit should be achieved whether by using steel structural roofs or by using composite deck or using simple concrete deck. The next requirement is horizontal bands should be provided in order to strengthen the structure against earthquake loads. Provide horizontal bands in masonry structure to enhance earthquake resistance. Here the earthquake load acts as a lateral load so we have to ensure that the lintel band or the horizontal band is provided in order to ensure the lateral stiffness of the structure which then transfers the load from the top of the roof to the walls and then transfers to the bottom band the plinth band the lintel band Masonry above lintel band transfers the load to the lintel band, then masonry below the lintel band transfers load to plinth band. This is in case of flat roof, while if we have a gable roof, then the gable band is also recommended to be installed in high seismic regions. Falls that are sensitive to earthquake forces. Therefore, we need to provide a strong foundation for the masonry structures as well as adequate heel and toe for the structure wall to avoid the collapse of the wall on one side that we can see the topping the toppling of the wall in the weaker direction since the stronger direction of the wall is here in the stronger direction of inertia. So we have to provide appropriate heel for the foundation and anchor the wall properly into the foundation to avoid the toppling of the wall which would be very uh, risky if there is a person sitting here or a very uh, important equipment is placed. So to avoid life loss or valuable material loss we have to properly anchor the walls into the ground. We have to avoid slender and long walls without providing any lintel beam. For example, this is showing an example that when the walls are provided too long, then we can have an internal overturning within the wall rather than collapsing foundation. Even if the wall is properly tied to the foundation, it will still overturn if it is too long. Short wall one brick versus tall wall one brick. Then we can also see the lateral or global instability in the structure that we can have in case if the foundation is not properly connected to the walls. Slender walls are vulnerable heights and length to be kept within the limits. Note this is the figure the effect of roof on the walls is not shown. So long walls and short walls also have an effect on the height of the wall. And in different codes, the criteria for limiting the wall heights is different. Wall corners must be joined for a box action. As we already discussed, box action in the masonry structure should be achieved. Whether you can provide reinforcement in alternate uh, masonry units as we approach the corner, or you can completely grout the wall uh, or the hollow bricks over here. So this is how strengthening of the wall corners can be achieved or you can even provide our RCC segment of the wall or a column 
to strengthen the wall action. For the direction of earthquake shaking shown, this type of structure tends to fail faster if the corner of the wall is not properly provided and may cause toppling of the walls. Similarly, if we have direction of earthquake in this direction, then we have to ensure that the regions where load transfer takes from one wall to another should be properly tied. Advantage sharing between the walls only possible if the walls are connected. Use small openings away from the wall corners. We have to ensure that the openings are provided away from the wall uh, corners as this would further weaken the single standing wall which is further supporting the earthquake load which is being transferred from the roof of the structure. So the openings are further weakening the structure if they are provided very close to the corners. Horizontal lintel bands are very important as we already discussed. This is an example of a small lintel band or large lintel band. Larger lintel bands are usually provided when the opening is for window while smaller lintel bands are provided when the opening is for a regular door limited to 2 to 3 feet of width of the door where large lintel may be provided when we have larger door or window opening. RCC bands are best that means reinforced concrete bands are best to provide the corner stiffness as well as the connection between the top and bottom of the structure. Incorrect practices are these one while this is the correct practices in which we have provided the joint between the walls and strengthen the joint while in the incorrect practice there is no proper connection formed here in between the joints. Wood bands can also be used if the structure is lightweight single story or the walls are consisting of reinforcement. BSEP IP wire mesh is also used for an alternate solution. Wall proportions behave as discrete units during earthquake therefore we have to properly connect them in order to provide a higher moment of resistance inertia to the structure. First the earthquake load applied to the roof then masonry. The maximum displacement when the earthquake is applied occurs on the roof of the structure while the earthquake is applied from the ground of the structure. So then the displacement is transferred to the lintel level then the displacement is transferred to wall pier masonry this is kind of a weak part of the structure if you haven't strengthened the corners of the wall or near openings and then we have the sill masonry if you have provided a band here that would be appropriate to consider the fact that we have to transfer the load from the lintel level to the plinth level walls crack without having vertical reinforcement as already discussed we need to have vertical reinforcement for example this structure has vertical reinforcement while this structure didn't have so it is acting individually we have to prevent the individual action of the structure we have to consider the structure as a box structure and design it as a box if we don't have proper joints between the in immediate immediate different part of the structure for example here the uh, the lintel band is not properly connected to the wall or anchored to the wall then the rocking action of masonry pier may occur if it is in weaker direction of the structure and the earthquake is acting in that direction it may also cause cracking in the structure if the roof is extremely heavy and the structure undergoes a very high earthquake force so we need to provide vertical reinforcement in the regions where the earthquake forces are very high we need to consider providing reinforcement especially in corners as well as in center of the walls where openings are provided alternate reinforcement can be economical solution as well walls behavior is modified with vertical reinforcement in the masonry this is uh, now acting as a unit when we have provided vertical reinforcement now it is acting as one unit and it is very, it is very sus low, low susceptible to rocking compared to unreinforcement wall, unreinforced walls. Cracks around the window opening can be minimized by placing reinforcement around that. For example, this is a structure. It doesn't have any lintel bands above and below this large opening. And also it is very close to the corner of the structure. 
earthquake induced inertia force act on the structure and causes cracking in the weaker direction of the structure as well as rocking of the structure as it is acting individually cracking in building with no corner reinforcement is an example very common example in many ruler parts of uh, pakistan india or asian countries and it can occur in row rise structure as well while if we provide lintel bands and properly connect the corners of the structure as well as openings then we can avoid this kind of failure in the structure this was over all important points to be considered when designing a masonry structure whether it be single story or multi story especially in regions of high seismic requirements